G'day and welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk some more about the Detrim Blitz DT9 and the onboard flight controller built-in integrated receiver setup, which I have here on this Hawksky, which is like a Bixler, but made by Dynam. And I've flown this model before, but I retrofitted it. I put the receiver slash flight controller in here and the GPS on the wing. As you can see that cable, it's a real, it's terrible. They need to change that, need to change that, first thing to do. Had my Mobius here, but the battery went flat, I'm sorry. I hadn't used it in a long time, and I gave it a quick charge, but not enough. So here we go, and I've got the transmitter down here so we can see what's going on. I'm going I'm to plug this in. And one thing I have to say about the whole thing, the setup was so brilliantly super simple and easy, didn't need a computer, didn't need anything, just plugged it in and it worked. And that's one of the reasons you'd probably buy this, probably the main reason you might look at buying this particular, s oops, very noisy. Well, probably the main reason you'd look at buying the system is, is it just works out of the box. It does what it says on the box. And I was, both Ron and myself, were actually pleasantly surprised, surprised at how well this works. Now, let me see, one of these buttons takes me into, and the, all the voice prompts are already programmed into this. It's all set up and ready to go. And here's, this is a really nice screen, a telemetry screen. And it tells you lots of stuff, like at the moment there are no satellites. Let me just pull in a bit because you probably can't see on that. Okay, hopefully you can get a bit of view now, but all the information is relayed back in real time to the transmitter here. And come on, let me get some, try and get a, what am I doing here? Oh. Okay, um, go GPS coordinates, you've got uh, just everything you want, um, inclination, declination, pitch and roll, all that sort of stuff. You're not going to look at this while you're flying, to be honest, obviously, because if you're flying line of sight, you're going to be looking at the model. If you're flying FPV, you've got goggles on. But this is the kind of stuff that would appear in your... Uh, let me go for it here. This is kind of stuff that would normally appear on your OSD in some cases. Um, we've got voltages, we've got distance, um, we've got the mode that's operating, and we've got this uh, switch here which changes our modes. So we've got gyro mode, that's kind of like rate rate mode. So there's no self-leveling, but the gyro stabilizes the aircraft. This is the most useful mode, probably I think for most people. It just makes the model so much more stable. Turbulence, it, it doesn't, you don't really feel the turbulence. And then there is the safe mode. Now safe mode is angle mode. Basically, if you're flying along and you flick it into safe mode, it's just going to, if you're upside down, it'll level itself, come up the right way. And if you're, you know, in massive great dive, it'll pull out level. It, it's, it's a common mode in a lot of flight controls. It's that's just basically save your bacon mode. And if you're learning, to be honest, it's not a bad way because as soon as you let go of the sticks, the model will return to straight and level. And that's what a lot of people like. Um, makes them feel far more confident. So you can start with that, then you move to the, the gyro mode, which is the, like the, the rate mode. And then you can go right back to, to manual because it tells right, that's passed through. So the flight control does nothing in that mode. And then you've got return to home on another switch. And this was all set up. I don't know if this is the way the system comes or whether they preset this one up for me, but it's really, really simple. It's one switch to change your modes, another switch to bring the model home, and it just works as advertised. Didn't have to change any of the um, PIDs. There is a, a thing with a little remote controller here. Let me plug that in and show you. Oh, I can't actually because I've got the receiver in now. <laughs> I should have done that before. But the little box I showed you, the little three-in-one box, it gives you the ability to change stuff like the, 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 the uh, radius of the loiter circle when the model returns home, when it's circling over you. You can see that currently comes at set at 25, but you can make that much bigger if you want to. And it's probably a good idea because 25 metres radius is a pretty small circle. And when we were flying the model, it was actually a bit banking quite steeply to maintain that. So I'd, I'd, I'd widen that out to 50 metres in most cases. Uh, but you can do that through the control. You can also control the, the gain of the gyros or the, the effectively the PIDs for pitch and roll. All very simple. It's just so simple to do it. You can reassign channels and switches to functions in the flight controller without the need for a computer. And that's, that's it now. To be honest, if you go to the trouble of setting up iNav and tuning it and, and doing all the soldering it, you will get a better result. You get more flexibility, you get more control, you can determine the return to height when you're coming back. You can do all sorts of clever stuff that you can't do with a super sim simple system like this. But this is super simple. And as I say, we sat down, we plugged it in, went out and threw it, and it flew. And it did what it said on the box. And there was no messing around. That was brilliant, fantastic. That is just so good. Um, for people that aren't tech heads. So I can't really fault the whole system very much. Now, would I recommend that people buy this transmitter and the flight controller with the receiver in it? Well, it's pretty hard to make a recommendation like that these days. I'm going to be totally honest. I mean, there is nothing wrong with this. Well, actually, I tell there is something wrong. The little wheel on here doesn't work properly going one way. Maybe it's just this unit. I don't know, but it's 
it jams, it jams, and then you push so hard it actually clicks. So there's a fault in that little, these little thumb wheels, I don't know, no manufacturers apart from JR seem to have been able to get them right. I mean, we've got the Radio Master and the Jumper. They both have issues with the little wheelie wheels. This has an issue with the wheelie wheel. What is it about wheelie wheels? Why can't people just make a, a rotary encoder that works? I don't know, but this one is faulty on this transmitter. As it may have just been a production. This looks like a bit of a second-hand transmitter. I think this was probably one they've been using themselves and they sent it off to me. Yeah, it works. I say this wheel is the only problem. Would I buy the transmitter? I don't know. If you are someone who really just wants totally turnkey, you know, take it out of the box, half an hour later you're flying it, don't have to set things up and mess around, yeah, this will give you that, it will give you that. But there are downsides. It is a Detrim product, I don't know what's compatible with it. If anything, I will check the Spectrum compatibility, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. But you are tying yourself into a brand, and I don't know that that's such a good idea these days when you've got such a range of multi-protocol radios that will work with just about any receiver on the market. Um, if you're willing to take a moment to learn how to use something like OpenTX, then something like the, the Radio Master would be a much better value proposition than this for long-term use. But if you just want to get kick-started and you're prepared to say, I want a radio and a receiver flight controller that I can throw in a model and I'll use it, and when I'm finished, I may look at buying something else, then this is a viable proposition. I don't know the price. don't know the price. So I can't give you a value uh, equation on that. Um, if I, uh, I'll put a link in the description to the manufacturer's website. You can go and have a look. They dare say you'll find prices out there. Um, it depends on the price, what the value proposition is. But um, certainly, the flight controller itself, built-in receiver flight controller, uh, working with this transmitter, it is a fantastically simple and very easy to use system that works as advertised. As, as I say, though, um, if you weren't someone who were willing to pay a premium for that super, super easy functional use, um, you might be better to look at the standalone unit, which is this one here, which you just, it's still just one lead from your receiver, S-Bus lead from your receiver into this, and you get all the functionality that offers, but you get it um, with the flexibility of having a radio that you know, can work with virtually any receiver. So that's what I'd say, but yeah, um, I am very impressed with the way that this works straight out of the box, no tuning required. I didn't even have to use, I did plug in the little three-in-one box, but I didn't have to use it because it just worked. Just worked, as as it said. And that's that's all you can ask. So there you go. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the manufacturer's website, as I say. You can go and have a look. See what they've got there. I think they've got a website. And if you've got questions, comments, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them in the question -y comedy bit down there. In the meantime, if you've got the money, you want something super simple, or well, not super simple, but super easy to use, it's worth considering this whole setup. If you already have a radio and just want a simple flight controller that will bring your model back, then you're better to go for the standalone and use your current receivers. And, and it's worth noting that originally I looked at this as an FPV flight controller, but while I was flying it, I realized the value actually is for line of sight. This is a fantastic line of sight. Now, I've had a really bad week with my Parkinson's, and so my hands have been pretty unsteady today, and I'm also I just really not in the groove. And it was really nice to have this set up here because I fl flipped it into the, the rate mode and it, it was flying super stable, super steady, brilliant. And if I had got totally confused and lost orientation, whatever, because the sky was very grey and the model here is, is white, if I'd lost orientation, I know that I could have flicked the switch on the transmitter, it would have come straight back the right way up and circled overhead as it did. I mean, that's, that's great. And if you're a learner, those are really important things. So line of sight, this has real application. It probably wouldn't be my choice for FPV because if I'm flying FPV, I want something that has an onboard OSD. This doesn't have an OSD. So just like the Zod HD Copilot, which doesn't have an OSD, this is really a line of sight tool for, for a lot of people. Although if you fly bareback FPV, nothing wrong with using that either. Downsides, this horrible, horrible, horrible GPS thing. They should ditch that, throw it away. Use some silicon leads like we've got on the servos there to a much smaller GPS because you don't you don't need a compass for a start. No fixed wing aircraft needs a compass, and GPS these days the size of your thumbnail. Much lighter, much smaller, much easier to find a place for. Away you go. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, would I buy this? As I say, yes. If I wanted something that I could just take out of the box and get flying within half an hour without having to touch a touch a thing, without having to program anything, this would be pretty damn good. There you go. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make this all possible. Bye for now. Made the noises. Yeah, let's go head on. I got the screen up again. Here it is. Here's the. I don't know if you can even read in this.
probably not. Yeah, enough. I can do a separate video. Yeah. Anyway. We've got five already, mate. Oh, that's good. That's nearly enough. Hands off, it's just the gyro stabilization. Oh, yeah, so it's very smooth. It's um, I, yeah, I'm it's just self leveling, it just stays where you put it. That's kind of nice, it's working extremely well. Oh, yeah, no problems with that. And now I'll try this self leveling, which may not be very good because we haven't got the receiver leveled very well. I might have to step in and recover it. What's that? Oh, that's returned to home. I pricked the wrong switch. Oh. Not familiar with this. I'll try it again. Okay, there's the self leveling. I'll put some turn in. No elevator. And it is losing height, but it's, it's leveling out now. It's maintaining altitude now. And that turn, I'm just using aileron. Cranking it over. That's as far as it goes. Here we go. Release the control. Back to level. I'll put it into a dive. Release the control. Come straight back up. Oh, yeah. No, it's flying as you'd expect. It's, it's yeah. a, it is a flight controller and it's doing all the right things. Now we'll flick the return to home. I'll go a bit further out and flick the return to home. Well, that's risky. Right. <laughs> and are we ready? Yeah. Return to home. Here we go. Coming back. Coming back, does what it says on the box, but, Ron. Does it go around above us or what? We'll find out. Why is it climbing? Yeah, here we go, it's doing an orbit. Doesn't seem to be coping with the wind as well as it could do, but it's... Is that you? Uh, no, that's, that's all, it's all over the Oh, I'll get the bloody stupid ear, I'm going to pull over. Yeah, it's just going around in circles, so I'll turn yeah. it off. I'll land it with, this is in the gyro mode, so it's not self-leveling, it just cut, compensates for wind and turbulence. Look at that, that's brilliant. Oh, this flies really well, I've got to say. Look at that. Well, there you go, Ron. That's, that worked.